I was saying to myself, I walked on before I tripped, and I was like, oh, I've tripped three times walking on practice, you know, and don't trip when you do it. I just tripped again. <laughs> uh, first of all, I just want to say a big thank you to Animoto. Uh, I'm deeply honoured that they've asked me to present for their company. You know, I work with a lot of people, but when you work with a company that actually has the truest heart and soul, like from the founders right down to everybody that works there, they're one of my favourites. And their sort of laser focus is making your business and marketing easier and better. So they asked me to come and present on business. I sat down and I thought, I'm going to give you some of my favorite tips on business, on creating an online presence, on your brand, on your marketing, on infusing yourself, your purpose and your voice into that marketing. And then I realized I have 45 minutes and I have 45 slides. So I'm going to go very, very fast. So you may want to rewatch this and take notes as fast as you can. Okay, number one, I believe this wholeheartedly so much so that this is why it's slide number one. Your energy introduces you before you even speak. Now this is so true when you walk into a room. The way you walk into the room, the confidence with which you walk into the room, but most importantly, we as women watch people watch us. We watch people look at us and then we determine what they think of us or how they judge us through a filter of our own thinking. So when you look at somebody looking at you, that what you decide that they're thinking about you is your thoughts about yourself, not theirs. Social media is no different. Most people have no concept of how powerful the energy of intention is when you write a post. If you're stinky and you need money, it is going to emit itself through your words, through your posts, through the way you're marketing yourself. So everything I believe, and I do this, I actively do this with my brand, my social media, my business, is coming through me and out to the world. And I know, I know that when my intention is off, when my energy is off, when I'm exhausted, when I'm overworked, when I'm pushing it too far, when I sound like I'm BSing myself and other people, when I'm overselling, when I'm selling from a place of need instead of service, that that is highly, highly sort of communicated in my posts. And you don't realize how many people do you follow that you one day just think, I don't want to follow this person anymore. And you don't really know why you're repelled by their energy, what they're saying, what they're speaking, what you're seeing, what they're doing. And you need to understand that that energy is so extraordinary. And if you can change the way you think, feel, value yourself, your brand, your business, then you find this really authentic voice that has lots and lots of purpose. Number two is you must learn how to sell. Now, men traditionally are better salespeople than women are because they're all about competition and fight or flight. And of course, they have the sort of structure to work towards being better and more powerful and stronger, whereas women are constantly emitting that tend and befriend, and I just want everybody to get along. And don't get me wrong, we have some killer instincts, but that killer instinct is often uh, out of balance with being a woman and being that, I just want everybody to be happy and <laughs> saving people. We're constantly trying to save people, especially when we sell to them. So a male salesman might hear an objection and think, it's just an objection, I'm gonna keep pushing. Girls hear an objection and think, oh, I need to help these people. They're broke and they really need a big discount, like 80% at least. And let me throw in more. Let me give you more gifts. Let me throw in a back massage because clearly, <laughs> clearly you need help and I'm here to help you. And you're not running a powerful business. And learning to sell without shame, learning to actually serve others and receive money in equal balance is one of the most powerful things you can learn in business because then you can actually make money, be sustainable and run a business for a long period of time. I'm now teaching so much selling because I realize how much people just push it away. Now in my journey of building a business and a brand in the last 18 years, it's really been personal development for me. I was terrified of money, I was terrified of pricing myself, I was horrified by the idea that I would change my profile picture on Facebook. 
I had absolutely no concept of putting myself as my face and brand. I wanted to hide behind other people, behind my staff. I didn't want to stand up and say, I am in business, I can serve you, I am good enough. I was so plagued and worried by what people would think of me that I did not make my brand about me. In fact, my first business was not my name, it was called something else. Now, I believe selling is a value metric. And if you have a fear of selling, if you have shame around money, if you have shame around uh, your product and service, if you have shame around receiving money and you don't deal with this, you are going to drive money away from you constantly in your business over and over again by what you say, what you sell, what you post, what you speak, what you emit, and the energy with which you dwell. Number three, what do you sell? So as a business mentor, I sit down and I say to people, what do you sell? And most people cannot adequately or even enthusiastically describe to me their product, their pricing or their service. It is very hard to talk about pricing when you do not value yourself, when you do not value your time, when you do not value your service and when you do not value what you do. It's going to hinder you straight away when you struggle to communicate that. You know, you cannot market until you can sell. So if you shift your core value, if you shift your service value and your product value and what you're putting out to the world, then clearly your marketing is going to change because you're speaking with a value. You're marketing with value on your social media instead of marketing with price. How many times do you see people constantly marketing with price instead of value. Number five, learn to receive money and learn to receive this money guilt free. This is an equal exchange. When am I good enough to get paid would be one of the first questions I have to answer to any small business or solopreneur. When you are good enough to serve, that is the answer. When are you good enough to get paid? When you are good enough to serve when you have a product or a service that people want or need, and when you have developed a system to serve, when you realize the value of what you're serving and what you're creating, so that you can receive money in equal exchange for that service, okay? And that is so strong and powerful in me because I could not make money in my business until I learned to value my product, my service, myself, and my time and then everything changed. Number six, everything that will stop you is fear. Okay, everything that stops you from walking into a networking meeting with confidence, everything that stops you from writing with your true voice, everything that stops you for creating a product and service that is also your truest purpose is fear. What will people think of me? What if I'm judged? What if I'm altered from a tribe? What if people tell me I'm not good enough? What if I'm rejected? Okay, fear is not to be conquered. You are not here to conquer fear. You're here to acknowledge it and work with it. After 17 and a half years in business, I still feel fear. I feel fear when I go into a big meeting, when I negotiate, when I put myself online, when I do a big workshop, I still feel fear. I have not conquered fear. I simply work with that fear and it doesn't cripple me anymore because I understand that I can work with this. This is the first thing I'm going to ask you in the first bit of meeting you and your business. I'm going to ask you to give me your elevator pitch, your short pitch. I'm going to listen to it. I'm going to, I'm going to firstly listen to how confidently you tell me this, how easily it rolls off your tongue, but mostly I'm listening to if you are speaking to me as a consumer, you don't have to convince me that you're good enough to do this job. You have to convince me that you have got a product and service that I want because I'm the one spending the money. And it's really important to me that in your pitch, your pitch is about the service that you are giving me because I'm the one paying. And yet everybody makes their pitch about them. Everybody nervously tries to talk about themselves instead of what you can do for me. When you create videos online, tell me what you can do for me. When you create text that goes on your marketing, on Instagram, on Facebook, 
Tell me what I'm getting. Don't tell me about you. I'm not interested in you. I'm interested in me. Remember, consumers are selfish. They're the ones spending their money. They're not really interested in you. I don't care if on your about page you like long walks on the beach and fluffy bunnies. I'm interested in what I'm paying for and what I'm getting in equal exchange for that service. And that is very, very important to me. Have you? Have you defined what your service and experience is? Can you explain to me enthusiastically with love exactly what it is you do and what it is I am going to experience? Put me in that hot seat of understanding what it would be like to be me in front of you being served by you. I want you to actually describe to me the most incredible part of the experience that you offer. And until you can do that, you are not going to speak with value about the product and service that you have. Nine, are you in love with this product, service and experience? You can sell anything you're in love with. Anybody, women, they are the biggest consumers in the world, the biggest networkers. We share, we share stories, we are brilliant storytellers. We love talking about experience. If you can turn your experience into a story, then you can communicate. At, at the most powerful level is the ability to tell and connect with a story. Now imagine that the people coming to your company can tell a story about the experience they had at your company and then they go and tell every other person they know because that's what women do. We share stories and we love to share emotional stories. So the second you can tell a story about your experience, the second you can make a story out of your experience, then you have evangelists all around the world telling the story of what they experienced with you. And trust me, once they tell that story, all the people that hear it say, I want this experience too. Number 10, do you value it? Your product, your price, your service, your time, and your self-value. If you shift these things, everything changes. Everything you attract changes. Think about your time in relation to your family, your loved ones, and your children. Okay, how valuable is my time? Then you will understand the equal exchange of time and money. Number 11, are you building a new business, a solopreneur business, small, medium business? Are you reconnecting a business that is already here? Are you reinventing yourself, upskilling, reinventing? I want you to focus now here on building value now. Every single day that you touch your social media, every moment you think about typing a blog, every time you go to post on Instagram, Facebook, every time you think about making a video for your business, Am I communicating and marketing with the most amount of value? Okay, and all you should do and speak is value. Put this on your office, on the wall. I speak value. I speak heart. I speak value. Okay, and everything you talk about is value, value, why more value? And you are going to create you're gonna create a library of value in you and build your confidence. And it is very, very, very strong. As you build your confidence, you'll understand it is not yourself that you're building confidence for. It's the fact that your service is getting stronger, your business is getting stronger, your experience is getting stronger, your story is getting stronger. That's where confidence lies in the ability to give really confident service. People say to me all the time, you're so confident, Sue, you're so confident. No, I'm not confident. I'm not confident in myself, but I am very confident in my service. I'm very confident in what I do, how I do it, and how much I love it. And when you understand that, it's very easy to communicate to people the love that you have for your brand and product and service when you value that. That is not about me. I will always or maybe always be riddled with self-confidence or doubt, but the truth is, is when I reconnect to what I give, I'm at my strongest, okay? So ask yourself this, I think this is really powerful. 
put the thing you're selling, so write down what it is you're selling, whether it's the experience, the product, or all of the things you're selling, put them on a table for one day. I want you to do this in the next week. I want you to focus on looking at this one thing or multiple things that you sell. I want you to look at it and I want you to ask yourself this question. If money is not a driving force behind selling this, then what is? If money is not the driving force in marketing this product and service, then what is the next thing that comes up for you? Because so many of you are trying to sell online using money as the core value, and money is not what motivates people. Although, all of you are going to say, you say that, Sue Bryce, but then the first thing somebody asks you when they call is how much does it cost? Now, you have to understand, money is secondary to desire. Desire is something I want, uh, especially when you show me a product or service that I desire. I'm like, I want this. The first thing I'm going to do is ask how much it costs to see if I'm even in the range of having this product and service. If I'm not in the range of having this product and service, I value myself as a business owner. If somebody said to me, oh, that's quite expensive, I'm not going to be shamed around my cost. I'm just going to say to them, yes, it is an incredible service and experience. And when you are ready for me, you know where I am and you have my number, please call me as soon as you are and then we can book you in. I hold my value and service right down to even an objection or a no. But ask yourself, if money is not the driving force behind selling this product and service. What is? Why is this valuable to people? Why is this valuable to me? Have you asked yourself that question? Have you actually sat? Can you look me in the eye and tell me why your business is valuable? Can you honestly explore that in yourself and say, I will tell you why, because I can tell you 100% why my business and my experience and my product is incredible because I've been working at it for 28 years and I love that I can say that wholeheartedly and with great pride, okay? I need you to do that work. 13, my lucky number, do you know your shopping demographic? I could teach an entire workshop on shopping demographics. Why do I focus my marketing to women? Because they are consumers, they love luxury products, because my brand demands that I focus my, my marketing to women, and because women bring men. And you know what? It is one of the most uh, it is one of the most extraordinary things to see that I've created a very feminine brand, but then I have a very feminine product. So my focus is this female shopping demographic. There are four powerful shopping demographics, four. Okay, number one is girl power. It is the 16 to 30 with no children. Okay, she has very strong needs and I know what her shopping average is. We have tracked her for years and years and it's specifically, would you believe, no children. If you had children under 30, you instantly go up to the family first shopping demographic. Why? Because when you've got a family to pay for, your needs change, your priorities change. And when it says family first, I'm sorry ladies, but you become last on the shopping list. Your family's needs come before yours. So if you're marketing to a woman with children, you need to understand she's time poor. She does all of her internet research on, on the internet when the children are asleep. She can't necessarily leave the house because the kids are there and you know that's illegal. So you can't just leave, <laughs> leave them at home and go to the pub. But the truth is, is at the end of the day, her focus is family first. So if that's your marketing demographic, you need to work through her family to get to her because that's her highest value. And one of the extraordinary things about women shopping demographics is it's so profiled, it's crazy, but they've been watching us. They've been watching us and they've been tracking us in Amazon and Google, they know. They know what you want and they know what you're searching for and they know all of your secret desires. Uh, women 30 to 50 with no children is a different shopping demographic. She's in a different wage bracket, salary bracket. She shops differently, spends more. She makes big buying purchases with her girlfriends. Okay, she's not family first, but she's strong, she's powerful, she's independent, she spends a lot of money. She's an independent woman, I am an independent woman, I am without children. So my sales demographic is strong, we come in groups. 
um, groups of women, which is super powerful and wonderful. And then, of course, we have the 50 plus, which I call wise woman or 50 is fabulous. This is the most unmarketed to demographic in the world. They are the biggest shoppers of lingerie, uh, luxury lingerie, luxury travel around the world. They have more income than all of the billionaires combined in the world. They control the world's wealth. They're inheriting from both their parents and their husbands. And this woman is so powerful and nobody is creating a product for her because she is unseen in media. A woman over 50 doesn't appear in media unless it's a retirement or maybe a Viagra ad or like she barely doesn't exist because we don't want to see women over 50, do we? They're just old and nobody. And this drove me to create a brand simply for this woman. This woman needs to exist. This woman is my mother. She's beautiful. She's powerful. And by the way, this woman in three years is me. And in three years when I turn 50, I want to walk into this I want to walk into this platform knowing that this woman has been seen, that this woman has been heard, that this woman has been empowered, because this woman will pay you before these three will. And this woman brings these three. Also, she's the matriarch of the family. And if you have not created a product or brand for 50 plus, you are missing out on the biggest shopping demographic in the world. Create a different story, video or campaign, for every one of those demographics and find a way to associate your brand and product with each one of those demographics. Number 14, what is your superpower? Have you identified what your superpower is? See, a long time ago, I, I didn't understand that I had a very high price point in my business. My average sale was $1,850. And that was a lot of money. Then it went up to $3,500 per day per client. And I did not value that the time I spent with people was valuable, okay? I just knew that I was making a product for them when I was spending the day with them. But I did not consider that my greatest power is to give my love, attention, energy, and empower somebody standing in front of me in their most vulnerable moment. And that is what I understand now has value in my business. And you might not be seeing your own superpower, but until you identify it and go, maybe my superpower is connecting people. Maybe my superpower is to make people feel good about themselves. Maybe my superpower is to be entirely present in my conversation and moment with people that I can truly look at a client and say, I see you, I hear you, I serve you, I'm connected to you. What is yours? And you know what? Ask your best friends. Ask someone who loves you. Ask someone who loves you to tell you what your superpower is. Speak with your superpower. Use your superpower in all of your marketing. Make videos with your superpower. Connect what you are saying in terms of service to your clients with that power. I still believe in tangible products. I still believe that you can have a brochure, a fold out, a business card or a magazine. And I still believe you can have something in your hand as well as online. Now we can create videos, we can create online presence. Our website is our folio online. We can speak to people, but when you are in front of people, if you hold or create a product, if you've created a product that has a visual presence online, then you should be able to hold something that you can tangibly give to somebody. Now, it's ironic that I stand in front of you for Animoto who creates online marketing because the truth is, is the fastest way to get people online to follow you is to give them something in person. I'm still an old school and a firm believer in when you touch something, you hold it. When you hold it, you want to take it home. You want to keep it. You know, and that applies for most products we buy. Women are very tactile. We like to touch. We like to feel. We like to hold. And we like to take it with us. Okay? And if you can create something that has purpose, that has value, that is beautiful, that is attractive, that is enticing, you're going to keep it. One of the strongest things I did, and I'm an image-based company, was to put a powerful poem on my business card because everybody kept it. It was a beautiful poem, uh, Derek Walcott's Love After Love, and everybody kept it. And it had my name on the back, and it was a reason for you to keep tangible product to follow me online. I'm still a big believer in touch and feel. Number 16, make it easy for people to spend money with you. It just, just shocks me. 
how difficult businesses make it for me to contact you or spend money with you. Every time that phone rings, it is money and I know you're tired and overwhelmed and stressed out and dialing it in and just a little bit burnt out. But when that phone rings, that person on the other end has money and they want to give it to you. And you <laughs> are not being very nice because you're tired and you're exhausted. And it's like when your child comes up to you and you have nothing and you might snap at them or be rude and then you think about it afterwards and you, you know, severe mummy guilt. And then you're like, oh, I'm a bad person. I better drink a bottle of wine. And <laughs> then you try and be nice to the kids the next day. And the truth is, is at the end of the day, this is what happens. We become so focused on stress and how overwhelmed we are that we forget to just give good, solid service and listen to people and speak to them and let them be heard and acknowledge them. They're going to pay you. And that is the best part. Number 17, solve a problem in your marketing, in your Facebook, in your video campaign, in your Instagram. Solve a problem. The best marketing in the world solves problem and answers objections. An objection is not a rejection. It is a call for more information. Now, when somebody objects to what you do, how you do it, or how much you cost, they're actually asking for more information. If they weren't interested in your product and service, they would simply move on. If they're objecting, they're interested. In fact, an objection is the first sign that a sale is about to take place. Nobody spends money, small or large, without giving it some thought. If they're objecting, they're waiting. They're asking for more information. They're asking for you to make them feel safe about the decision that they're about to make. They're asking you for a discount. They're challenging you to bridge the gap between the desire they have for your product and the accessibility of you to give it to them at the cost that makes them feel comfortable. All right, number 18, the ultimate website. The ultimate website is simple, easy, easy to navigate, easy to connect with you. It's going to show your location on every page. So it doesn't matter how they come to your landing page, it's gonna show where you are, where you're from, what you do, and it's going to very clearly communicate you, your brand, your product and service. We overcomplicate things. We talk too much about ourselves and not enough about our client. I want you to have a buy now. If you have a brand or product or service that you sell, are you able to create a buy now page? It was the smartest thing I did in my business. And the crazy thing is, when you have buy now on your website, you have the ability to make money while you sleep. You can wake up in the morning and find that nine people have purchased your product and you just got paid $3,000 to sleep. And that is the kind of ultimate goal for making money in business, is making money when you are not in your business. Number 19, you're going to market with value, but you are not going to market with discounts. Okay, you, you can discount but you will not discount until you get to the sales or negotiation phase. Because until you're at negotiation phase, you are not selling value, okay? You are selling cheap. And the second you market with discount, you're then gonna get a person who's only interested in a discount, and then they're going to come to you, do your product and service, and then they're going to ask you for more discount. Have you heard the saying, you know, there's no such thing as a free lunch, right? Don't look a gift horse in the mouth. That's the resentment feeling you will feel standing in your sales room negotiating a discount when you market it on a discount. And you might as well just sell yourself cheap. Sell yourself, don't worry about any profit margin, you just gave it away right here. But this is how you market with value and no discount. If somebody says, is that the best price you can offer? Is this the best you can do? You can say, everything is negotiable and I'm happy to talk about it at the sales phase. When you decide on the product and service you would like, if you're paying today, I can happily negotiate a discount for payment. Oh my gosh, and when you say that for the first time, first time I said it, I said, hey, everything is negotiable. <laughs> no, we, we can um, design something, obviously, um, well, then I can, and then obviously, uh, when you come in, I'll make that, yes, of course. 
and I learned and practiced, I learned and practiced, and I said it with confidence. And now I'd say, yes, everything is negotiable. I'll take your firstborn. Okay, and quite frankly, when you come in and you look at your products and choose what you like and then we'll create a package for you, I can discount you based on how you would like to pay for that. Because what company in the world discounts you without you choosing a product, what you're going to choose, what you're going to buy, what you're going to pay and how you're going to pay for it? It's that simple. And I know that it's nerve-wracking and it kills you just saying it, but you have to practice it. You have to walk, go for a walk. You have to say it out loud. People in the area will think you're a crazy person. Maybe wear earphones because then you don't look so crazy talking to yourself. <laughs> practice saying it so it rolls off your tongue with assertiveness and confidence and that you can say it knowing the full value of that statement and what that means because that's how business works. 20, Hallmark Holidays. Hallmark Holidays are all about, this happens four or five times a year. We have Christmas, we have Hanukkah, we have Valentine's Day, Mother's Day, Father's Day, Valen oh, you name it. We have a Hallmark Holiday for it. It's a multi-billion dollar industry. Jump on board. It's going across the internet at the same time as you are. You need to start preparing for Mother's Day now because you have basically a month and a half. And then you're going to go into June and July with lots of product sales, bookings, shoots, gifts, because you have already prepared yourself on a holiday that the world has already been educated on. We know what it is. We're simply looking for consumers. We're simply looking for consumers to buy into our product and service. You are trying to speak out to all the people that are looking for gifts around these holidays. It is a given. It is there for you. And most businesses do not create marketing for it. 21, blogging and social media. Set your intention. I could create entire workshops about blogging and social media. I feel like uh, this is really powerful. I want you to stop before you post. I want you to ask, what is the value I'm marketing here? What is my authentic voice in here? Am I speaking authentically to this product and service? Set your intention. I want bookings from this. I want product sales from this. Set your truest intention to serve in this moment. This is about the emotions you're experiencing and feeling as you're posting your marketing and it is very very strong number 22 seek respect not attention it lasts longer build value okay just keep saying it I need to build value when I'm selling it build value when I'm speaking it build value when I'm writing blogs build value more value more respect less attention okay really really important 23 you attract what you show. You attract the type of client you show, you attract the product that you show. The product you sell and you put it out there and the people who purchase it are drawn to you because you're showing it. If you don't love one of your products, stop showing it. Learn to let go. When you feel like you have a product and service that you hate, but you have to do it to earn money. And that is not the truth because you will sell more when your energy is focused on the love and joy of creating what you love to create. It makes a big, big difference. So number 24, relationship building is the secret to all small business. Learning to be likable is a hard thing to do. Read Dale Carnegie's How to Win Friends and Influence People. Come on, he wrote that in 1937. The same rules apply. When you walk into a networking event, you are going to project your confidence to emit confidence instead of, so you, I want you to push out and transmit that you are confident that you're giving service, not that you need attention or that you're hoping to be noticed. Okay, two people stand in a room. One is comfortable in their own skin, confident. They know that they've got a great product and service and they're happy to talk about it and share, but ultimately, that person is going to make it about you. That person is going to ask you questions. That person is going to listen to you. That person is going to get your business, right? The person who is sitting in the corner because they're being socially anxious and awkward, which we all are, don't get me wrong, I'm not making fun of socially anxious people. I am very much an introvert and I hate networking events, but I mastered my confidence in business enough to be able to speak with confidence and service in my pitch. Now, the person who is needing is asking for attention. That person is repelling, and I call them stinky. 
I call them stinky and repelling because the energy is one of need, not one of giving. And as a business owner, you must learn how to give with full power. 25, create your own networking alliance of small, medium business owners. It is one of the best things you can do in your area, not people in the same industry as you, multiple industries. You can help these people, you can share, you can share clients, referrals. These people will become your strongest evangelists and the biggest voices in your business. And you can meet with them every month, you can meet at a cafe, you can meet at your office, at your studio, wherever you are, and you can create a monthly business alliance that's going to really help you. I want you to build an online community. The fastest way to do that on Facebook is to create a private group for your business. If it is applicable to your business, build a private group of these people and nurture this community. You know, the traction that I get from my private Facebook group is insane. I can drop multiple marketing videos into that group on a daily basis because they opt to follow me in a private group. We can have a more private and, and, and personal conversation in that group, knowing it's private. Um, and yes, there are other people in the group, but it changes the dynamic of the group from a business page you know, exponentially. It's quite crazy. Number 27, the energy of your business comes through you, okay, to your staff, to your clients, and it can be felt by people on every level of contact to your business from social media to walking into your store, studio, salon, you will feel it from the moment you walk in. How many times have you walked into a beautiful business and you just feel like something is wrong and you know it, your intuition is feeling it, you know there's something something wrong here, you know there's something off in the energy, so to reset that, to reset that energy, you must reset yourself because you are the one that must come in with gratitude, with service, resetting yourself. If you're feeling stressed out, burnt out, you need to replenish. You're no good to anybody coming in with resentment and pain and hating what you're doing. You're no good to your staff if you can't give them love and support and that they can't return it to you because it's coming through you to your people. I, there is a coffee shop up the road from me, makes the best coffee in LA. I don't go there anymore. I went eight times. Eight times I got served by eight different servers. Eight times I was served by the rudest server I have ever been served by. It occurred to me, I keep going back because the coffee's good, but the server sucked, so I've stopped going there. But it occurred to me the eighth time that their boss is horrible. Because if they were happy, they wouldn't be all the same. They didn't even work together. The eight people I've been served by have all been individually employed outside of each other and they all serve me the same horrible way because that's the way they're treated. Their boss is filtering down through their business to them and that is the energy in which they're emitting. And I don't go there anymore. And I want to meet their boss because I tell you, after eight coffees, I, I have to really weigh up. I love coffee so much that I'm prepared to speak to your boss. <laughs> 29, if you don't find joy in it, you're not going to do it. Okay, if you don't find joy in it, you're not going to do it. And if you, if you won't create in it, you're not going to do it because the essence of manifestation and creation is joy. That essence of it, the power of it is joy. And if you don't find joy, you're not going to do it. So find the joy in what you're doing or outsource it. You know, there are so many things. People always say, I love the saying, some people mistake bad management for destiny. Okay, this is not what you're doing. It is how you are doing it. And if you cannot afford to outsource something, find the joy in it. You know, do it in your underwear if it makes you feel better online. Do it whatever makes you feel good. You've got to do it because if you don't feel good, you're not going to do it. You're going to avoid it and you're not going to create in it. And joy is the most powerful manifestation energy in the world. When you are creating, you're not in competition. You're not in envy. You're not hating on other people. You're in pure joy. Money, number 30, is a byproduct of delivering an incredible product and service. It is not the singular focus and goal of selling. 
Money is simply a byproduct of delivering an incredible product and service. And when your money goes, you can look directly at your product and service because I guarantee you, you have not connected, you have not educated your client, or you have not delivered. All right? Guaranteed. 31. Needing to be paid will drive money away. In fact, needing to be paid will drive money away from you so fast, the energy of needy is one of the most repelling energies in a room in the world. And you can smell it online. You can see it, you can smell it. That's stinky. And unfortunately, it is one of the hardest energies to shift when you're in money pain and in money debt, because I was there. And I realized I was repelling money because I was chasing the money instead of offering the service and the product that money would come to me. So when I said at the start, you must learn how to sell, I then said you must learn how to receive money in equal exchange for your product and service. There needs to be some self-value work and money receiving work done here. And I love teaching people how to be profitable in their business so that they can be sustainable and have longevity and the lifestyle that you really, really want. Okay, number 32, understand your inner power and support that power. Every day I watch women in business subordinate themselves. Constantly less, one step down, meek. Do I, am I good enough? Can I do this? Am I good enough to do this? We do this in the workplace, we do this at marketing meetings, we do this at networking events, we do this when we're selling. We're constantly subordinate to this idea that people will like me if I give more but I want you to give more value, not give more of your bottom line. Number 33, follow your stress to fear. Anytime you feel stress, follow the stress to a core fear. You will find it straight away. And it almost always comes down to, I'm not, a, I'm not good enough, or I'm unlovable, or I'm unacceptable, or what if people reject me? What if people tell me I'm not good enough? What if, what if, what if? Well, here's the thing. If it's part of your energy, you're going to attract that. So yes, if your greatest fear is to be rejected, you're going to be rejected. It's almost like the universe's way of laughingly saying, oh, you're afraid of rejection? Okay, let's overcome that. So to overcome it, I'm going to put a big <laughs> rejection in your path. And then you are faced with the one energy that you were trying to avoid the most. And you really have to ask yourself at this stage, did I manifest that lesson? Was it a projection of what I most fear? Was it the one thing I didn't want to happen and I brought it to me? Because what you focus on expands. That includes your bank account. Yeah. All right. Really important. You are not going to be ousted from your tribe if you're rejected. You're going to recover. You're going to bounce back. You're going to keep selling. Number 34, profit margin. You must know your cost of business. Too many women in business are avoiding what's in their bank account, avoiding how much they're spending, how much it's costing to create a product and service, and then what the profit margin is when you sell it. Now listen to this. The difference between the cost of buying and making something and the price at which it is sold is yours. That money in between, okay, is yours. And I'm going to ask you as a mentor, what is your profit margin? And you need to be able to tell me. Because if you're running a business without knowing this, then you are not focused on your profit margin and you're not focused on yours. You're not focused on the you part of this, what you're getting out of this equal exchange. Know your bank account daily and take control of your money now. You would be amazed at how fast you can shift money when you turn all of your attention towards it, regardless of your money pain, all right? That margin of profit is for you. So that margin after you've paid to make that product and service, that margin is yours and the tax man. Oh wait, we're splitting it? <laughs> yes, we are. So now you're gonna have to make four times more money because the tax man will ask for his. Number 36, you find your authentic voice. In the noise of following people, we become a little focused on trying to speak with someone else's voice, trying to be like so-and-so, trying to be like him, trying to be like her. 
instead of being yourself, trust that authentic voice and follow it. Be more obvious than you think you are in your business. You'll be shocked at how better you will communicate when you're being more obvious. This is something that I teach and I truly, truly believe. Confidence and boundaries, confidence and boundaries. You're going to build your confidence by building a library of um, comebacks to objections, the way you speak back to people, the way you can negotiate yourself, the way you feel comfortable with money, the way you can talk about your value. That's going to take crippling fear away and build confidence. Okay, and as you start to build confidence in business, you're going to need some strong boundaries. Okay, you're going to need strong boundaries. However, understand this, a boundary does not have to be verbally set. So much is set within yourself. Okay, I may be afraid and feel unsure of myself, but I have a product and a service that people want, love and need, and I have something that these people need. People need me. I'm not trying to force myself on people. I'm not trying to sell snake oil. I am trying to give people something they need. And when you alleviate the objection and you give them something they need and you solve their problem, they will come back to you time and time again. Ladies, speak up for yourself. Speak up. Set boundaries. Set strong perimeters with your friends, with your family, with other businesses, with the businesses in your network. Be calm, be assertive, set strong, strong, strong boundaries. And remember, constantly check the giving and receiving and make sure that they are in balance. When you are working, you are giving. When you are getting paid, you are receiving. They must be an equal exchange of each other. If they are not an equal exchange, you are out of balance. Look at it like this. Left for leaving, right for receiving. They've got to be equal. If you're over giving and not taking enough, you're going to be here, you're going to be out of balance, it's going to hurt you. If you're over giving, if you're over receiving and you're not giving enough, People are going to pull back from you. You're going to get possessive pushback. You're going to get people saying, she's not good enough, she doesn't give enough. No, no, no. You're out of balance. Constantly checking your equal exchange product and service. Money is the byproduct of that product and service in equal value. Trust me, it's so true. Boundaries are so important. Did you know that the best way to teach somebody about how to treat you is how you treat yourself? In business, you are the face, you are the brand of your business. Act like it. Act like you respect yourself. Act like you're worth the money you charge. Act like you're worth the business you're building. Act with respect. Be respectful. Be respectful to yourself. You know, if you want to cultivate respect, give respect to people first and then it comes to you. Act in a respectful way. Respect who you are. Respect yourself and watch that boundary transmit. You know, you can be shamed for selling. You can be shamed for putting a high price point on something. People can say, oh, you're not worth that, or that's too much money, or who do you think you are? You can feel deep shame around receiving money. In fact, guilt and shame are the two energies that push money away. But I will tell you this, you cannot be shamed for giving good service. You cannot be shamed for giving an amazing product and service. What are people going to say? Uh, you, what? You had an amazing time. They're incredible. They charge what? But that's what you're getting and it's so incredible and I value it. You cannot be shamed for serving people. You simply cannot. You know, from the day I started as a junior in my business to owning my own business, I still want to greet people at the door and give them the absolute love and attention and service that they deserve. I am not too important for my clients. My clients pay and that is why I am there. Observe, okay? Observe your feelings. When you are setting your intention, writing your blog, writing your social media, observe your feeling. When you're creating a video, writing a story, connecting with someone online, how do you feel? Your intuition and your guidance is so strong. You know the answers to your problems. You know them. I know you know, because you're a woman, and you have that power to listen to yourself. Stop looking outside of yourself for people to validate you, for people to tell you you're good enough. Your entire
entire makeup is to tend, befriend, and make people feel good about themselves. It's what you're designed to do. Put it into your business, your service. Listen to yourself. Trust yourself. Meditate. Be quiet. Find your voice. It's deep inside you. And if you think it's not, just be quiet for one minute. Shut up and listen to yourself. That heart that's calling you, that's telling you, share this, share this joy, follow this path. You're doing this wrong. This shouldn't be so hard. You don't need to be under duress or stress or pain to make something successful. You have to be in a place of creation, manifestation, joy, giving service will get you paid. Check you are not out of balance. And my last one, you are incredible. Every single one of you are uniquely incredible at what you do. And you can decide to be unique, incredible, and give amazing connection and service in your business. You know, empower yourself in your own business with love and joy for what you do and watch the work get easier. Trust your own voice, okay? You are enough. And anybody, anybody can change the world. One single person, product, service at a time. Okay, wake up every day and say, I empower myself and my business and shift what you're putting out to the world.